Speaker is Toby Adedeji, series host. Hi everyone, it's Toby with Outside Science Inside Parks. How amazing would it be to get a job where you get to scuba dive? That's what these scientists get to do at Biscayne National Park. It's all in an effort to keep an invasive fish from taking over this beautiful ecosystem. Video shows diver getting ready. So I, I think what gets me excited about going out every day is knowing that we actually are having a meaningful impact. Speaker is Vanessa McDonough, supervisory park biologist. It's not just diving because diving is fun or diving is cool, which it is, but it's diving with a purpose in that we are helping to mitigate the impacts of a highly noxious invasive species that, um, if left unattended, is going to basically obliterate our ecosystem. Video shows lionfish swimming. Graphic reads, to date, park divers have removed nearly 7,000 lionfish from park waters. Video shows divers going in and underwater scenes. Vanessa speaks again. Today we went out and we were visiting a couple of sites where we know that the Indo-Pacific lionfish is known to recruit to. Um, these lionfish are non-native species, came from the Indian Pacific Oceans, and when they are left um, unchecked, they basically will wipe out an ecosystem. They have a voracious appetite, will eat everything in their path, almost to the same size as the fish. They reproduce far more frequently and far sooner than their native counterparts. Video shows lionfish being speared. We know that the lionfish are here to stay. There's just too many of them and they're too widespread. We're never going to eradicate them. But we, we do know that on the sites where we go and we do repeated removals, um, we are having a meaningful impact. Divers surfacing. So we saw a total of five lionfish. We were able to get them all, which is good. And that's a good number for us to see. We haven't been to the site in a long time, so I actually expected there to be more than that. But that there wasn't, it's a good thing. Vanessa showing fish. This is your lionfish, it's a very distinct red and white stripe pattern. But some of the spines have venom in them, so if you were to get poked right there, um, it's a mechanical process and venom would be released into your skin. Fish in nets. So problem number one is their appetite and how much they can eat. Problem number two is that they don't have any natural predators here. Because of their venomous spines and the way they behave or they um, like I pick them up, they pick up their fins like that. They're not a very good prey item for our natural predators. Speaker is Mike Hoffman, park biologist. It was cold, <laughs> but it was still great. Got a lionfish. So we are going to be dissecting one of the invasive Indo-Pacific lionfish that we caught today. Our biggest lionfish has been 17 inches, almost 18 inches, I believe. Uh, this guy is about halfway grown. The Pectoral fins are not venomous. They will actually use them to corral fish or when they feel threatened, they'll make themselves look bigger. But they'll corral fish into a corner and then they'll use their mouth and you can see the giant gape on that guy. Close up of mouth. And they will corral, corral the, their prey into a corner and then suck them in. And you can actually see they almost have this, these uh, eyelashes and almost a Fu Manchu on their, uh, on, their, on their face. They actually use those to attract prey. Good science is always messy. Uh, we spend a lot of time smelling like fish. I come home smelling like fish every day, but that's okay. I wouldn't have it any other way, personally. View of park waters. Vanessa speaks again. When we go out and we study the natural resources, we remove exotic species and things like that, we're trying to protect the environment so that my children, my grandchildren, and everybody else's future generations can also experience a place worthy of protection and worthy of being called a national park. I, I feel very fortunate that I go to work every day and it's doing something that I truly in the bottom of my heart believe is a meaningful profession and that these resources are here for everybody. We need to protect them and I feel honored that I get to participate in that. Toby on camera again. With their efforts, the park will be in good shape for years to come. Be sure to join us next time when we meet some very young scientists at Cabrillo National Monument. Graphic reads, thanks for watching Outside Science Inside Parks. Next month, young ocean scientists at Cabrillo National Monument.